and welcome to another class of ABM EBI Sciences. This is Abhishek with you. So today I'll be going to teach you about capsules, slime layer, S layer, and glycocalyx. So most of the books didn't say clearly about these terms, which is very basic concept of microbiology. So when you are going to study the ultrastructure of prokaryotes, that time you will be familiar with this type of terms, and you have to be clear at, at your concept. So that's why I made this video. So let's start. So first one is capsule. So capsule is the outer structure of the cell wall okay so cell wall we know the bacterial structure is divided into several steps like first cell membrane then cell wall that cell wall in case of gram positive it is peptidoglycan in gram negative it is uh, the accumulation or cumulative uh, effect of the peptidoglycan layer as well as the lps layer that is the outer membrane so Capsule and slime layer both are present outside the bacterial cell wall. Okay, so before going to that terms, I will be saying something about glycocalyx. So if you understand glycocalyx, it will be easier for you to remember the capsule as well as the slime layer. So, so it's a polysaccharide structure or sometimes it may be uh, made up of polypeptides so glycocalyx is made up of polysaccharides or polypeptides okay now why i am saying glycocalyx before going to that capsule and slime layer because this glycocalyx itself when it is present in a tightly bound form with polysaccharide and cannot be removed from the bacterial wall or can be detached from the bacteria easily then it is called capsule now this glycocalyx when it is present loosely attached to the prokaryote that may be gram positive gram negative rke bacteria so then it is called a slime layer which can be easily removed okay so that time the glycocalyx which is mainly composed of polysaccharides may sometimes contain polypeptides and can be divided into two substances so for your concept i am writing easily glycocalyx divided into capsule and slime layer So this is the first concept. So clear your concept that glycocalyx itself is a layer which is divided further into capsule and slime layer depending upon the composition of the glycocalyx as well as the dependence of attachment to the bacterial cell. Okay. So one by one I will be going to each and every one capsule and slime layer. So I will be drawing one picture. So, so that you can be easily, it can be easier for you to understand the thing like suppose this is the bacterial structure and this one is capsule and this is the cell wall okay so this area you are seeing which can be easily seen when you stain this bacteria with nigrosine or indian ink that time through the uh, background staining you can easily observe this kind of capsule now in case of slime layer if you draw the same thing I'll just draw it is for your so the point here is when it is tightly attached you can see the shape that is very thick in case of capsule the glycocalyx layer is thick but in case of slime layer it is not so thick but it is loosely attached and it is tightly attached
okay and it is loosely attached so i think you are clear now with these three terms capsule slime layer glycocalyx so glycocalyx is the main substance or the polysaccharide or the polypeptide which is divided into capsule and slime layer so if you say a definition of capsule you will be saying that the glycocalyx layer which is tightly bound with the bacterial cell and may contain polysaccharide or peptides in their composition is called capsule okay likewise the glycocalyx layer which is attached loosely attached with the bacterial cell and composed of polysaccharides is called slime layer and which is which can be easily removed so i think this is the clear thing what is capsule so i'll say something about capsule important points which you need to remember so either gram positive or gram negative bacteria may contain capsules so in case most of the time capsule is a polysaccharide substance okay but in some cases like bacillus anthracis anthracis it contains d glutamic acid d glutamic acid in their capsule so this type of composition makes the capsule much more harder to penetrate as most of the enzymes cannot degrade this kind of capsule so it's working as a defense mechanism or offense mechanism for the bacteria or the prokaryote okay so how it can be a defense mechanism because the host the host enzymes cannot degrade this kind of protection from this uh, bacteria whereas in offensive mechanism it can just bypass the phagocytosis so most of the time when a bacteria enters into our body into human body animal body that time the macrophage is the primary line of defense which will go which will be going to phagocytose the external antigens but here it will not be possible for the particular bacteria which may contain capsule as their defense mechanism that's why it can overcome the phagocytosis process so this is the very important aspect of bacterial pathogenesis okay so now i told you what are the things it can be helpful it may can also help in case of attachment avoiding phagocytosis okay and also in resisting desiccation because it contains water also this capsule contains water also that Uh, help the bacteria to avoid any kind of environmental desiccation situation so this is the few common and important information about capsule now i'm going to slime layer now in case of slime layer as i have already said it is made up of polysaccharides okay it may be a glycoprotein or glycolipid in the composition of the glycocalyx which is present there also called the slime layer if it is loosely attached it helps in mostly in case of prokaryote that is bacteria in motility and attachment generally it has not been found that glycocalyx is essential for the uh, offense mechanism rather it is helping them in defense mechanism also 
because that glycocalyx or the slime layer helps in filtering chemical compounds which will be entering into the cell and may cause harm to the bacterial cells. That is why it is filtering the chemical compounds. So, apart from this, this slime layer is also useful for destroying any adverse or I can say antibiotics. So, one essential mechanism in their defense is the destroying the antibiotics. It is not actually you can say that destroying the antibiotics is actually do not permit the antibiotics to enter into the cell. That is why uh, it is also helping in the defense mechanism of bacteria. Now, up to that I have already cleared capsule, slime layer and glycocalyx. So, glycocalyx is divided into two parts and that is the whole situation here. Now, the S layer, what is S layer? S layer is totally different things from these substances because it is also called surface layer. Okay. So, surface layer are also called surface layers. So, surface layer is very important in both bacteria and archaea. Okay. So, this S layer or surface layer composed of glycoproteins lipids, polysaccharides, and peptides also. So, this is the composition of surface layer. Now, this surface layer formed during the due to the secretion of bacterial cell itself. So, when the prokaryotic cell or the RK is secreting some kind of substances which will go outside the cell and form a paracrystalline structure that is paracrystalline structure paracrystalline structure due to secretion okay now this paracrystalline structure may be of square or in a geometric shape. So, the shape may vary according to the secretion of these substances around the cell which will form the surface layers for these bacteria. So, this surface layer may present in gram positive bacteria comma gram negative bacteria gram positive RKE and gram negative RKE. So, it is very important part of the RK system where the cell wall outside the cell wall it is directly you can see the surface layer not the capsule or the slime layer. So, in case of RK it is a very important aspect of their cellular organization where you can see the surface layer. So, here I think it is clear that these three or four terms are now totally different from uh, surface layers. Now, this surface layer can be formed by in vivo and in vitro secretion. Okay, so, that is a separate issue. I am not going in detail about that, how they are going to in vivo or in vivo, in vitro uh, secretion methods and how they form the surface layers. But the main thing here is their composition, their way of uh, forming the paracrystalline structure, 
which kind of bacteria possess them and what is its function. Function of S layer is multipurpose, several functions like you can say attachment, comma motility, filtration, porous structure, Apart from that, it may be it may be important for defense mechanisms, it helps them to sustain, helps them to sustain in adverse situations okay and the last one is avoiding themselves from being attacked by competition. What does this mean attacked by their competition? That is similar type of bacteria as you know that they involved in competition due to the nutrient availability there. Suppose the both uh, two categories of bacteria are just uh, competing for the particular nutrient source there that time that another group of bacteria may secrete some of the substances that will inhibit or kill the other group of bacteria. So that time it comes very handy to them and this surface layer protects them for this kind of uh, secretions or this kind of uh, chemical compounds which are present in the environment due to the other type of bacteria which are available there. It may help them to survive the situation and use the nutrition, uh, nutrition availability source very efficiently. So I think this is the concept, this is a very clear concept, I think this is clear to you. But if you have any problem, please ask me in the comment section. Thank you very much and please comment.